And uh, remember to hit uh, subscription notification buttons. That really does help to generate a lot of uh, underground synergy here in support of what we're all about via the WPRPN.com network. So uh, that being said, let's let's turn our sights now to the guest we have waiting via London, UK, 2.30, approximately p.m. his time, 11.30 in the evening here uh, via the Korean Peninsula. Jonathan, it's it's been a while, but uh, it's great to have you back. We're looking forward to to any and all of the latest news of the world phone hacking scandal updates you might have to offer us tonight. Indeed. Hi there, uh, mates. How are we doing? Uh, yeah, it's been there's quite a lot happened since um, we last spoke approximately. Eight months ago, I had a quick look um, earlier and noticed it was about eight months ago when we last spoke. So for anyone who's new to this, uh, if anything I, I mention over the next uh, half hour or so seems a bit science fiction-y or a bit conspiracy theory-ish or seems a bit bizarre and out there, then I would just recommend that you take a look at my website circusofthemind.net, where the evidence, where court documents are, where there's links to independent third-party um, evidence, facts, and proof that this is not just some batshit crazy conspiracy theory like it could sound to you if it was the first time you'd heard about it. So you've probably seen the image that went up that the guys at World Pirate Radio Network posted out saying what was coming today, where it showed the front page of a British newspaper known as the News of the World that shut down a number of years ago. And that image showed the front page where it said um, goodbye, basically, because it was their last ever edition. And that came about, long story cut short, after it was exposed and discovered that that newspaper, the News of the World, which is one of many media publications uh, that were owned by uh, the media mogul Rupert Murdoch, who, as you no doubt know, whether it's in America, Australia, other places in the world, he, he's got magazines, newspapers, uh, television and radio uh, media links pretty much worldwide. And anyway, the news of the world ultimately got shut down because it was discovered they'd hacked the voicemail messages of murdered schoolgirl Millie Dowler. Now, without taking ages to explain the background on that, if you, if, if you quite literally after this show were to Google Millie Dowler, murdered schoolgirl, uh, and News of the World, you'll see way more detail on that than this time allows us to go into here. But ultimately, it disgraced the publication. They made out it was an isolated incident type of thing, that it wasn't something that was happening um, on a regular basis. And they had to kind of publicly apologize. And they also closed down the newspaper as a kind of way of trying to draw a line under it all. Unfortunately for them and for many other people who since discovered they were victims of illegal phone hacking and other unlawful information gathering techniques, as well as being victims of just completely fabricated, made up uh, stories. In other words, complete packs of lies presented as though they were truth to the general public in such a manner that for some of those people, some of those victims, it actually has ruined their lives in some cases, including my own, um, and a number of people that I know, it, 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 it's led to people, gross miscarriages of justice where people have served time in prison purely on the basis of lies, um, sometimes um, lies given under oath by the alleged person, uh, 
um, who's supposed to have broken this truthful story that turns out to be fabricated nonsense, namely the disgraced former fake sheikh, uh, as he was known, uh, Mazia Mahmoud, who was a journalist for the News of the World and then later went on to work for another group of Heard on Paper, The Sun on Sunday. Until famously in 2014, uh, a trial collapsed against British pop star Talisa Contos Stavlos, where she'd been accused by Mazza Mahmood in a Sun on Sunday article of apparently being a drug dealer, or, or, or well, rather being involved in helping acquire drugs for the fake shake character. And the truth of the matter is, the actual long story cut short is that Talisa actually had and has an anti drug stance. Is very much against it. And during the case that made it to court on lies and fabricated nonsense, the judge realized and suspected that the reporter, Mazza Mahmood, was lying and went down a certain line of questioning and ultimately ended up exposing lies um, by Mazza Mahmood that he was lying on the stand in court during this case, which if the judge hadn't managed to uncover that, quite possibly Talisa could have ended up uh, another victim of uh, gross miscarriage of justice and ended up with a, a prison sentence based upon what we now know to be fabricated lies and nonsense. And um, fortunately, the judge... Alistair McCreef managed to uncover Mahmood's lies. Uh, he, he, he threw the case out of court. He let Talisa go free, quite rightfully so, because she hadn't done anything wrong. And even her colleague, who had agreed to acquire some drugs for uh, Mahmood, and this colleague had um, pleaded guilty, the judge turned around and said it would never have happened if Mahmood had not. Um, but up enticement and entrapped the people into doing it and manipulated them into doing it. So even though that individual, um, um, his surname was Coombs, um, pleaded guilty, the judge, Alistair McCree, said, no, off you go, you're not guilty, this should never have happened. Uh, it, it, it was fabricated nonsense, entrapment, and lies, and the case collapsed. Hooray. And very shortly afterwards, towards the end of 2014, uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, ran an edition of Panorama, within which they spoke to people who worked with Mazamir Mood over the years. And a load of people turned into whistleblowers and blew the whistle and exposed the fact that his modest operandi, his approach to target people, manipulate them, fabricate fake evidence, uh, edit secretly filmed videos to make it look like people had said and done things that they actually hadn't done, because he was taking things out of context and editing things, deleting some bits, and just total distortion uh, and fabrication, was illustrated by that panorama um, episode. Now, that kind of then alerted a lot of uh, Mazama Mood's past victims who themselves at the time knew what had been printed about them was not true. Obviously, they knew because they knew they hadn't said things that they claimed to have been said. They knew, as did I, that they hadn't done things that are claimed in the paper that they'd done, and that other things were completely blown out of proportion or taken out of context. Um, so they knew. But the fact is that at the time, the Crown Prosecution Service in England and the police were under massive pressure to take action on these allegations in Mazama Mood News of the World stories and to were under pressure to press charges. And so it appeared not to pay too much attention, in some may state an incompetent manner, to the validity of the claims or not. And consequently, a number of people um, got convicted of things that 
frankly, they either didn't do or they didn't do in the context that uh, Mazza Mahmoud, a now many years on convicted um, liar, had claimed. And so since 2014 onwards, more and more evidence has come to light, more and more people have turned into whistleblowers and come forward. For example, in 2016, these are key points. There's more to it than this, but we'd be here forever. Right. The key points that people can look into is that in 2016, after the collapse of the Talisa trial, Mazza Mahmoud was uh, found guilty in the Old Bailey of conspiracy to pervert the course of justice in that case against Talisa Contos Pavlov. In other words, he was found guilty of lying and the fact that he was manipulating evidence and fabricating evidence to make it look like she said or done things which she had. And the consequences of which were what exactly, as far as the sentence was concerned? Well, he got 15, he was given 15, sentenced to 15 months imprisonment for conspiracy to pervert the course of justice in the Talisa uh, case. Now, 15 months? Thing, that's, that's, that's absurd. That's just, just uh, barely even a slap on the wrist. Agreed. However, I, you know, maybe he's got a lot more music to face in the future because since then, as I say, when he got sentenced, um, if people search the phrase fake shake and phone hacking, they can find an article from October the 6th, 2016 on bylineinvestigates.com, a website, um, where the heading of the article is fake shake and phone hacking. And in that, a former boss, one of the big people who used to work as one of the bosses at the News of the World, uh, the late Greg Miskew, because unfortunately he passed away um, last, last year. Um, but he started to whistleblow and he turned around and said, yeah, you know what? Mazza Mahmood did use illegal phone hacking lagging and other illegal techniques and unlawful information gathering in the fabrication and creation of his nonsense stories. Jonathan, and let me just jump in there and ask for yeah? some clarification. Under what circumstances did uh, this editor pass away under? Was it was it uh, something cancer, from right out of the blue or was it a long time? No, long-term cancer, unfortunately, okay. terminal cancer. Right. So yeah, nothing, nothing nefarious. Okay. Just, unfortunately, long-term cancer. Um, but he, he he went on record in this article, sixth of October, twenty sixteen, and said that yeah, he knew this for a fact because he um, made the request for illegal information gathering to be done on behalf of Mazza Mahmood because. The main person used for doing those um, activities was the convicted, now famously convicted phone hacker, Glenn Mulcair, and that Greg Miskew went on record as saying he acted as the go between between Mazza Mahmood and Glenn Mulcair because Glenn Mulcair didn't want to directly deal with Mazza Mahmood. And that's in the public domain going back to uh, October. 2016, in that uh, Byline Investigates article, Fake Shake and Fawn Hacking, that people can find doing a, a, a simple Google search. Now, oh, sure. There's a lot of information under just a quick duck, duck, go uh, news mm. of the world, phone hacking scandal. You got a lot off of YouTube and then the whole lot. And now, one of the main links that you did send to us actually here, just in the lead up to things, was hackinginquiry.org. I was just about to mention that coming right up to date in the past week, a web page has gone live on the official uh, Hacked Off is the campaign group to help victims of media abuse and illegal activities. And they've got a new page up, which is hackinginquiry.org forward slash Mahmood, mm -hmm. which is hacking, H-A-C-K-I-N-G, inquiry, I-N-Q-U-I-R-Y, dot org, forward slash Mahmood, which is M-A-H-M-O-O-D. And on that page, you can see an interview with former Glamour model and now turned actress um, Emma Morgan, who was another of Mahmood's victims, and perhaps slightly more, um, 
eye-opening and shocking uh, an interview with one of the founders of Hacked Off, former Liberal Democrat MP, Dr. Evan Harris. And within that video, Evan talks about and makes mention of the fact that there is stuff in the public domain that confirms that Maza Mahmood did hack people's phones illegally, did have it done, and did commission other forms of unlawful information gathering, and that he fabricated evidence against people, entrapped them, manipulated and out and out lied, and that he categorically states the vast majority of people, but there was the odd exception, there was the odd criminal, genuine criminal exposed by Mazza Mahmood, but after extensive investigations, uh, Dr. Evan Harris and his team, uh, he categorically states on that article page, hackinginquiry.org forward slash Mahmood, that he can find one or two at best, hardly any of the people ever sent to prison on the basis of Mahmood's lies and fabricated evidence. Basically, he says that pretty much most all of them did not deserve it and were and are gross miscarriages of justice that need a proper, proper investigation to get justice, not just for me, but for other people, um, dozens of victims whose lives were ruined and sometimes they were also imprisoned for different periods of time on the basis of lies, fabricated, edited, but out of context or purely generated bullshit evidence. Um, that we now know to be the modest operandi in the vast majority of the stories and cases that Mazza Mahmood was involved in. Yeah. And we it, come up to more... Yeah, sorry, oh, go on. Oh, just going to add to that, it hasn't been touched on yet to this point. You might like to elaborate, mm -hmm. but uh, there was revealed to be extensive police corruption as well surprise surprise uh, so many of them seemingly as as the expression goes on the take you know as hunter biden knows that that uh you know that that term all too well you know the business 10 percent for the big guy similar kind yeah. of deal i guess with uh british police i'm not sure how much more you can Add to that what's well, actually been... well uh, a fair bit actually. I mean, on Circus of the Mind dot net, my website, there's various links to other things. Amongst them, there are links to pages where I lay out evidence of corruption that's been exposed within the Crown Prosecution Service, right? And corruption that has been exposed in the British Met Police. One particularly big example of that is the corruption um, uncovered in the Met Police. CPS and other high-ranking officials in relation to the most investigated murder, but as yet unsolved. The Report, most reporter Jill Danden, is that correct? No, that isn't the most investigated unsolved. No, the most investigated, most number of police investigations, but unsolved, is the Daniel Morgan murder inquiry, huh. which was the subject of a Channel 4 television a uh, three-part documentary called Murder in the Car Park, and wow. all the links to that are on Circus of the Mind. Don't they? And this guy who got killed, Daniel Morgan, was a private investigator involved in a company called Southern Investigations, which actually Southern Investigations, post the Daniel Morgan murder, were involved in uh, a lot of Maza um investigations which in itself is slightly bizarre. And if you look at the <laughs> government... Small um, world. Yeah, if you look at the government-funded um, Daniel Morgan murder inquiry that took place, uh, the inquiry into whether there was corruption or not, and the links to the conclusions and the report can be found at one of the various links you'll find on Circus of the Mind. Don't they? Their conclusion was that there was definitely corruption in the police, there was definitely corruption here, right, left, and centre. And if you search that PDF document for the name Mazia Mahmood, the journalist we're talking about, his name is mentioned several times mm -hmm. in relation to running interference, you may say, into one of those police inquiries. 
Is he a, um, is he a British citizen? This this fake Sheikh uh, Mahmoud character or not? He certainly was, so I assume still is. Yeah. Uh, and is he is he's free? He walks uh, the earth a free man at this point, does he? Uh, uh, as far as I'm aware, yeah. At, at this time, hopefully, we'll face up to more music in the future because, as he's illustrated, buy stuff on hackinginquiry.org forward slash Mahmoud. And I got... also on my site. Oh, go ahead. He, yeah, yeah. Um, he's guilty of a lot more than has come to light so far. Uh, are you not, with all of the intrigue and um, problems that have you you yourself have already, along with so many others, mostly of a celebrity type uh, background, been if uh, you've been you've had to endure and and, and suffer. Are you not concerned? Because you remain committed in in um, working to bring about further justice uh, to yeah. these matters, are you not worried in any way about your own personal safety? I was uh, a number of years ago, but to be honest, I so extensively I've, I've been getting it out there, and there's so many. The thing is, what what. What what I'm talking about, I very nearly managed to expose back in 1998. I won't go into that. We haven't got time. That's all on circusofthemind.net. Unfortunately, Law, what I didn't know at the time was that Mazin Mood was always three, five, maybe even ten steps ahead of me <laughs> because I didn't know that my phone was being hacked and other unlawful information gathering techniques were being I was just aware that he edited tape. He used illegal entrapment techniques. He manipulated things, uh, threatened people behind the scenes and claimed people said and did things which they never said or did. And that's what I was trying to expose. At the time, I had no clue there was phone hacking and other unlawful information gathering techniques. I now know and have evidence because I was approached by... Um, Dr. Evan Harris and hacked off, and it had come to light that there was a receipt receipt for a private investigation firm called LRI Research, a company which, incidentally, uh, Glenn Mulcair, the convicted phone hacker, worked for, and which, um, in the course of putting together my appeal against my criminal convictions, which I got as a result of my attempt to expose my move backfiring where I did ultimately become a victim because I didn't know that he hacked my phone. I didn't know he was five steps ahead of me. And more worryingly, I didn't know that he knew I was trying to expose his unethical and illegal techniques, which if any genuine journalist had been aware that that's what I was trying to do, they would have just walked away from it all and nothing else would have occurred, but instead he just did more and more, we now know, illegal and unethical things to do everything within his power to silence me. And at the time it, it, it did in the sense that I ended up with that um, prison sentence for delivery of counterfeit coins, which is fully explained on past editions of this show that people can see on your blog or on YouTube and also is explained at circusofthemind.net. Well, the key is bring, coming up to date now is that last year, in January last year, I went to the Royal Courts of Justice in London to appeal my conviction, or rather to ask for permission to appeal out of time, because it was rapidly approaching 25 years after the event. And despite them acknowledging the fact that I had tons of new evidence, and I'll come to what that evidence is in a minute, Despite them acknowledging I had that, they refused to give me permission to appeal out of time. So ultimately, I, I, I have to go down the, as do the majority of the other victims, down the Criminal Cases Review Commission route, which I did, and they turned me down towards the end of last year on the basis that they said that um, they basically agreed without looking into any great depth with what the Court of Appeal had said um, and, and left it on the basis that I, I, I kind of needed to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that 
the mood dishonesty was the biggest thing of relevance because they were saying, well, you knew who he was. Your intention was to expose him. And they missed the fact that at that time, whilst that was true, I was unaware that he'd been hacking my phone or using other unlawful information techniques. However, now I have a statement from uh, the late Greg Miskew stating that he did act as the go-between between, between Mazza Mahmood and Glenn Mulcair, as he's alluded to in that 2016 Byline Investigates article. Well, I've got a, a statement from Greg from um, that he put together kindly for me uh, at the end of 2021, before I ended up in the Royal Courts of Justice in January 22. And I've also got a statement from Glenn Mulcair saying that it's highly likely he was the person tasked with um, you know, doing the job that relates to this invoice that's got on it Smith Project and is dated around the time that Mahmood was um, ditching me up. And uh, I'm sorry, did you, say, you mentioned yeah. that that's Alex Smith. That That's your actually birth name. That's my birth name. Yeah, yeah my birth name. Right. Jonathan Rolls, my stage name, but my birth name's Alex Williams. Correct. So, uh, yeah, if people, if people go searching on the internet, you'll see that my uh, privacy intrusion claim that's currently in action against news, you, newspapers, that only comes up if you search Alex Smith versus um, News Group Newspapers. Literally. Yeah. A couple other uh, just quick points. Out of time, this sounds, I'm, I'm no legal uh, eagle uh, by any means, but I'm guessing that is similar to what we have in North America regarding statute of limitations, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In and chauvinistic form. Yeah. Okay. And Greg, who who wrote you this this letter uh, on your behalf before he passed away, this is the same uh, Greg. Probably not just a letter. A proper a proper sworn, legally put together, right? Sworn under penalty of perjury. Proper legal witness statement. Um, he put together before he passed away from terminal cancer, mm. confirming that he did act as the go-between between, between Mazza Mahmood and his team and Glenn Mulcair, the phone hacker, okay, to get just, unlawful information gathering done, yeah. Yeah, and just to be clear, he, he, what, uh, well, he was part of the editorial staff at News of the World. What was he chief? He was one, he was one, he was one of the bosses at right? the time. You okay. know, he, he was high-ranking, yeah. Gotcha. All right. So, look, yeah, we've got... And he, he mm -hmm. confirmed that he'd... You know, acted as a go between. We've got the receipt that uh, Glenn Mulcair says pretty much it meant he likely was the one who was involved in doing the unlawful information gathering on me. Another um, person who used to work with Mahmood called Steve Grayson, who used to be a photographer for Mazza Mahmood, and appeared in the BBC Panorama documentary in late 2014. And that documentary can be watched on circusofthemind.net. Well, Steve Grayson, again, has sworn me a statement where he categorically says that he witnessed Mazen Mahmood put a GHB-style, date-rate-style drug into um, the drink of one of his sting victims to make them more talkative and more suggestible and easily manipulated, which mm -hmm. is one of the things that such drugs can do, and he'd witnessed this take place in a sting, and also in that same statement, he categorically states that Mahmood also boasted about having a mate who was a chemist who got him these drugs, and that he boasted about using them in his private life in the dating group, which to me sounds a lot like he was bragging about date rape. You know, it's it's just incredible to think the way you know I, I cannot myself uh in uh, refer to what we have uh at our means and and i don't know if you say disposal but the way that the legal system works i just cannot refer to it in any sh shape or form way shape or form as j justice it's it's hard pressed that we find much justice coming to us via the legal system whether it's the uk korea Canada, China, 
anywhere you look. Some places and countries, of course, it's a lot worse than others. But this is a yeah. travesty. This is a complete travesty, uh, the, the amount of time there, that man... There are tons of victims, in many cases, like myself, over 25 years, the lives have been ruined for, and the credibility ruined, uh, uh, and many people have got, quite unfairly, criminal records based on uh, the lies of a serial liar and serial offender of doing unlawful and illegal things, including the evidence that seems to suggest drugging people against their will, which would explain why I felt more hungover after my meetings with Maza Mahmood than I would normally ever have done or ever have since right. from the amount of alcohol that was consumed. And I'm not the only person who said that. Consistently, celebrities and non-famous people who were his victims as well over the years, many of them have said during the course of their court cases that they believe their drinks were spiked. They just probably, they thought that maybe, you know, vodka had been slipped in the drinks to get them pissed quicker. However, the evidence now seems to suggest it was more nefarious than that, that actually GHB style date rape drugs were being administered because we know that on at least one occasion, one of his former um, team, Steve Grayson, Witness such, and that Mahmoud bragged about doing it in his private life as well. I've got that in the sworn statement that Steve Grayson has given me permission to talk about openly in the public domain and here, and as I do on Circus of the Mind.net. So we're now in March 2023, and the situation we're in right now, if we, if we kind of bring it right up to date, is that based on the Daniel Morgan murder inquiry report, where Mazza Mahmoud's name is mentioned. Um, in, a, in a slightly worrying manner a few times in relation to helping to derail police inquiries and whatnot. We, we know that there have been allegations of um, police corruption and um, some would argue Crown Prosecution Service uh, corruption possibly or uh, at best um, gross negligence because the Crown Prosecution Service have a duty of disclosure to anyone who is facing trial for any allegation. And their duty of disclosure is that they are supposed to disclose anything they know which could potentially affect that person's um, defence or the outcome of their trial. And it has now come to light thanks to things that were disclosed during the phone hacking cases in the High Court, has come to light that documents exist from 1994 that are in the archives of newsgroup newspapers. To this day, we don't know what they're doing in the archives of newsgroup newspapers, but that aside, they do exist. They've been uh, disclosed through disclosure process in the phone hacking cases. And some of these documents show that in 1994, the police and the Crown Prosecution Service communicated with each other and categorically stated that Maza Mahmood could not and should not ever be deemed as a witness of truth any further. And that was in 1994. And yet, for some reason, they carried on relying on him as a witness of truth and allowing cases to go to court on the basis of his evidence until the Talisa Contostavlos trial collapsed in July 2014. And then all the other cases, and there were dozens of them in the works that were supposed to come to court involving footballers, dozens of footballers, um, a, a, an Irish DJ, a whole bunch of other people, all of these cases were suddenly dropped because the CPS said they could no longer rely on Mazza Mahmoud's evidence as a witness of truth because of the Talisa trial collapsing. CPS so the thing is, standing, I'm sorry, CPS standing for what exactly? Crown Prosecution Service. Oh, yeah, service indeed. Yeah, service with a, smi they, with a smile. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're supposed to disclose anything they know. So in 1998, um, 
when the Sting article was done about me, full details on circusofthemind.net, that led to me in 1999 going to court and on the first day of trial, changing my plea because of manipulation uh, behind the scenes and being told that my defence of uh, entrapment and my um, intent of having intended to expose my mood dishonest activities may not work as a, a defence and that I'd be better off just pleading guilty and getting a, uh, you know, a smack on the knuckles. Um, although, actually, I ended up getting prison time, which, why, you know, people have looked at it since and said that was way out of proportion for what went on. But in any event, that's what happened. They never, at any point, told me about what happened in 1994. A case collapsed in 1994 because Mahmood was exposed to be a liar. And the police and CPS communicated with each other, saying he could not and should not ever be trusted as a witness of truth ever again. Yeah, so that's, that's from 1994 <laughs> onward. And how many people, nonetheless, had their lives dozens, destroyed? Dozens of people, dozens and dozens, had their lives destroyed well, prior it, to Talisa's case collapsing in 2014. Do you know that? Uh, are you pro- none of those people, mm-hmm. sorry, none of those people, I was going to say, none of them ever had it disclosed to them, the fact that Mahmood had been exposed as a liar in 1994 and that the police and CPS had communicated with each other and said he could not and should not be considered a witness of truth. That, that never, is a that, gross disclosure failure. That never came up in any other trials. No, and no. he still and he still hasn't. They've not even disclosed it to this day. In fact, I put in freedom of information requests wow. before Christmas, Trap. and I got responses. <laughs> I've had responses from the Crown Prosecution Service and the CPS Inspectorate who investigate the CPS, and from courts. And I did a whole bunch of um, freedom of information requests, and pretty much all of them, including the Crown Prosecution Service and the CPS inspectorate who were there to investigate the CPS took the we don't want to talk about this option, which is that they claimed that disclosing any information they held on file would not be in the public interest. Well, I say bullshit to that. Surely it's in the public interest that dozens and dozens of people have been wrongfully imprisoned on the basis of lies, fabricated untrue evidence, often at the hands of having been drugged without their knowledge and against their will, their forms being hacked, and by a serial liar who they knew as far back as 1994 could not be trusted, but they never told any of our legal teams. And to this day, in my freedom of information request, I actually said, I want any information you've got on file going back to 1994 when I'm already aware that the police and CPS knew we could not be trusted. Here's an important and question. Some... Here's an important question. Yeah. Uh, one of uh, several that have been coming to mind now through the mm-hmm. course of our uh, reconnecting. Uh, the the Sheikh himself, was he, do you believe, working entirely on his own? Or did he have someone behind him, other than even News of the World and perhaps ultimately Rupert Murdoch, who was pulling his strings, i.e., for example, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, any number of various intelligence agencies, shall we say? You know, was he, to cut to the chase, was he not perhaps an intelligence asset? And still remains to this day, presumably. It's arguable. I mean, that's arguable. He he bragged, he has bragged openly and during the Levis inquiry and other occasions of having bent police officers in his pocket. He's openly well, bragged about that. Whoa, 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 whoa. He, not, not, not throughout the course of, of formal court proceedings. Did I hear you right? Well, no, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't brag in court about that, but he has bragged in the past. If you, if you search Leveson Inquiry, um, Mazza Mahmood is a search term and search Mazza Mahmood, um, Ben Police Officers, search terms like mm-hmm. that. You okay. will find occasions where in the past he has openly bragged about having bent police officers in his pocket. So, so who is, and so he's paying off the cops. Who's Who who had been paying the shake throughout 
his years of operation, which presumably I'm not sure how long of a Ultimately, he was getting frame. paid. The book stops with news group newspapers or News International, as it once was, which ultimately is owned by Rupert Murdoch. Right. Yeah. Wow. Oh, boy. And this is right around the time when all this kind of uh, came to light. Isn't that where Murdoch ended up uh, on, on, he was uh, present at some formal uh, legal proceeding of, of some sort or another, and uh, there was someone in the vicinity who came, stepped forward and tried to uh, smack him in the face with a pie? Do you remember oh, vague, that? I have a vague <laughs> recollection of that. Yeah. Oh wow! Um, yeah, yeah. So, and how well, old yeah, is I mean, the, he's? He's getting up there. He's about what now? Ninety, at least ninety years of age. I'm sure. Yeah, something Murdoch, like that. Yeah. And bizarrely, it's just been announced in the past twenty four hours that he's uh, got engaged again, and he's ready to get married in the summer for the fifth time. Whoa, that's oh my! But he he just got married. A couple of years ago, he just got divorced. He just got divorced. He, he was married for what two hard. years, three years? His latest one, something like that. Yeah. Wow, sacre bleu. So, uh, so where are we are now in March 2023, right? And there's a lot more complexities to this. Sure. I do apologize, we don't have time to go into them all. But people who are interested can go and look at circus of the mind.net, they can go and look at hackinginquiry.org forward slash Mahmood. They can just do general Google searches as well, and they'll find tons of stuff on this. But through those two main ones, hackinginquiry.org forward slash Mahmood and circusofthemind.net, there are links to court documents, the statements I've talked about. There's, you know, there's evidence galore um, that what, what I'm telling you here is true. And on a daily basis, more and more stuff's coming to light that basically shows, yeah, Corruption in the police. Sure. You know, and... Uh, in the CPS. Lack of disclosure, massive disclosure failures going back to 1994. That's, in the that's Crown Prosecution Services, so, I believe. Yeah, yeah. A, a child, in the West, it's, it's CPS, typically people think a child protection service and services, very yeah. corrupt once again. I mean, it's hardly a place you can look at anywhere, any... Uh, government or bureaucracy agency whatsoever just clear across the world where you the, you know there's the uh there's corruption free it's all too often you know it's it's the rule more than the exception let me just give a quick shout out here to fox azure fred jingrass and joshua allen huckle all who have uh dropped in and joined us here uh we Hi do there, guys yeah and uh, we're feel free, gentlemen, to let loose with your thoughts, comments, questions. Uh, maybe some of you, I'm thinking Joshua has, uh, this is not the first time that he has seen you uh, drop by here and, and aware of your presence uh, and, and backstory, of course. But Fox and Fred uh, can't really say. So we will encourage everyone to check out more starting with uh circus of the mind and the url that we added to this week's uh, uh blurb actually and, and, and the promo blurb i believe is there we go magicalguru.com so those those are two of your main urls you yeah. know ex extreme danger extreme hypnosis that url seems to have gone by the wayside what happened it there? has however if people just go on my celebrity hypnotist youtube channel and then click on playlist there's one of the playlists on my celebrity hypnotist youtube channel called extreme danger extreme hypnosis and everything that was previously on that domain name is now in that folder the documentary, the web series, which also includes um, comment and observation of the fake shake and of Rupert Murdoch and of uh, the way that the media, it's the mass media, it's not just Rupert Murdoch's media, you know, currently in Murray Group newspapers in England and the Daily Mail newspapers as well and a whole bunch of others are working their way to court cases, most notably um one of the claimants against all of them daily mail mirror group and news group newspapers is prince harry um who has got multiple legal cases going up against multiple different 
um, media institutions, which will over the next coming month and year, certainly over the next sort of six to 18 months, will bring more prominently to the public light the level of dishonesty and illegal actions used on a widespread basis um, in the mainstream media. And, you know, from a personal point of view, since we last spoke, the biggest development for me is that on the 30th of September 2022, case number BL 2022 0016 Alex Smith versus News Group Newspapers Limited was filed in the High Court of England, where I um, claim and allege uh, on the basis of the evidence I have available that um, Mazza Mahmood and his team used unlawful information gathering techniques against me and carried out other um, unlawful and illegal activities such as drugging me um, and um, fabricating complete and utter nonsense. And that is now actually in, in the court system and an ongoing thing. Did you ever actually have to spend any time in prison as a result yeah. of all this? How much? We like, a, like a number of his victims. I, I was given two six-month sentences to run concurrently i.e. at the same time. However, um, fortunately, I was considered to be a model prisoner. Not surprising when you consider I've never got in trouble with the police prior to that or since. I have a completely clean record except for these Mazama mood um, related things. Um, and I was one of the first ever people in England to get what they call home detention curfew, so-called electronic tagging. So they right. let me out with they let me out early because I was one of the first people they ever tried it on. Oh. So physically inside a prison cell, locked up 22 hours a day, um, was just um, just short of eight weeks I did of that. But you know what? That's eight weeks longer than it ever should have been. Yep. Um, and it's eight weeks longer than it ever would have been if the Crown Prosecution Service had disclosed to me that in 1994 these communications existed and that a trial had collapsed because Mahmoud's dishonesty had been exposed. If I'd have known about that, my barrister at the time could have had proceedings a stay but on proceedings, things thrown out on the basis of Mahmoud not being a reliable witness, and it would never have got to court, and therefore it would never have got to trial, and that outcome could never have happened. Is that something that you stumbled upon based entirely on your own independent research and investigation or the, the this matter, the business the of 19, him? No, the 1994 right. existence of those documents, I was alerted to by people who were working on helping people research and collect evidence in the phone, hacking and lawful information uh, inquiry, um, privacy intrusion cases that are going through the high court. And during those cases, through the process of disclosure, these documents came to light as having been in the archives of these Greek newspapers, private communications between the police and the Crown Prosecution Service in 1994, saying they could not and should not ever any further rely on Mazza Mahmood as a witness of truth. And yet it, they did until 2014 when the Talisa Contos Davlos trial collapsed. You can probably. Massive gross miscarriages of justice. You could probably, uh, yeah, and the question remains, <clears throat> excuse me, why was this the case? And I think I can I can speculate and come up with a theory or two, as uh, I'm, I'm sure a few of our audience members can. The optics to this simply, it you know, do not look good, clearly. Uh, and uh, then again, given the fact that, well, it's a bit of a, you could tie it in to some extent. I was going to bring this up earlier, but were you aware that the, with the Jack the Ripper case that there still remain, I'm not sure how many files exactly, but mm -hmm. Scotland Yard to this day still refuses to release all of the Jack the Ripper files and, and documents that they have that were part of the, uh, 
the initial and presumably from their preceding uh, investigation. Yeah. And that, that really speaks volumes, like quite a lot of red flags right there being raised uh, where w one inquisitive minds can only ask themselves what's going on here. And what the, the official response is, I, I believe it is on privacy grounds, <laughs> you know, uh, something to do with mm. privacy, or or even maybe I'm not sure, sure if they cited national. It's not, a, yeah, it's not in the public interest. Well, you know, that's what the CPS and the Crown Prosecution Service Inspector, who's supposed to investigate them, uh, said to me about my freedom of information request. Most recently, they said it would. They considered it would not be in the public interest to release the files they had and the information they had on the move. Well, I would argue the opposite. I think exactly. it's very much in the public public interest the fact that they ignored from nineteen ninety four onwards the fact that they themselves communicated and said that he could not and should not be considered a witness of truth, which means they know from nineteen ninety four onwards that people were being taken to court on the evidence of a liar and that people were therefore getting jailed um for not having done things and not having said things that were claimed against them. And if even if they had said or done certain things, they'd been manipulated into it um, and coerced into it and threatened into it in a manner that was wholly um, illegal, unethical and immoral on the part of Mahmood. There was no public interest journalism justification on his part. You know, you on, on, on hackinginquiry.org forward slash Mahmood, Dr. Heaven Harris talks about in his video the fact that they were secretly filming Maza Mahmood and his team when they did these investigations or stings, as they've now been come to know. Well, you're only al allowed to use surreptitious filming if you have a public interest um, justification and proof that you believe there's grounds that X, Y, or Z um, was going on. And in most all of the cases that they've investigated, that um, Dr. Evan Harris talks about in the video on that page, including myself and many other uh, victims, such as John Alford, the actor, Emma Morgan, the model, and a whole bunch of other people. There was no reliable, you know, background of these people having done dodgy things in the past that could be argued as being the cause for doing the secret filming. And there quite simply wasn't, because as in most all of the cases, this was something that Mahmood manufactured and manipulated and caused to occur. He was the he was the start, beginning, and middle end end of the supply chain. If you look at the Panorama documentary where it talks about, and it's on Circus of the Mind dot net, the case of Emma Morgan, she ultimately took some money given to her by the fake shake, handed it over to somebody that the fake shake and his team had informed her was had drugs and got the drugs and then handed them to Mahmood. That doesn't make her a drug dealer. But the way they wrote it up, bloody hell, you'd think she was some kind of um, queen of crime. Complete and utter nonsense. They supplied the money. They said where to get it from. They were all parts of the supply chain, as Steve Grayson um, talks about openly in the Panorama documentary. And it was the same with my case, you know, they provided me with the money to be able to get the counterfeit coins. They told me where to go to get these alleged counterfeit coins. I went there and saw the person that they told me about and then supplied these coins, which incidentally, Mahmood did not give to the police until two weeks after his um, distorted and fabricated story about me appeared. And there is no proof of chain of evidence for two weeks. Those alleged counterfeit coins were in this serial liar's possession. So there's no proof that he even gave the same coins to the police that I picked up using the money they'd given me up front and told me where to get them from. It just The more you look into it, the more you just go, this sounds like a whole bunch of science fiction. This, possibly, this couldn't possibly have been allowed to take place. And these things couldn't possibly have been allowed to go to caught could they and yet dozens of times dozens and dozens of times they were and dozens of people became you know lives ruined uh and 
victim of prison sentences based on complete and utter fabricated nonsense and lies. Here's something else that uh, I think everyone should probably reflect upon. Ask yourself, how many times has this similar, I guess you would call it, um, you know, the term was modus operandi, as you brought yeah. up earlier, Jonathan, but has it been uh, employed uh, throughout the years, whether Britain or any other country, and 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 innocent victims have done exactly what you've just touched on once again. They've been made to pay the price in the worst uh, because of these frame up jobs. You know, it's it's it destroyed their lives, careers, and uh, just everything you could possibly imagine, including I would I would think leading some to even uh, suicide, unfortunately, or at least something that looked like. Look like it. It had been, uh, uh, you know, more, 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 lives. more than likely. Yeah, more than sure. likely. It's definitely ruined people's lives on a monumental lives, reputations, uh, and careers on a monumental level. Um, is Murdoch? And, is Murdoch and his his media empire? Are these the only mainstream media? Because we know, you know, the Mockingbird media, as I so affectionately refer to them, uh, you know, the, the Mockingbird CIA assets that they are, quality, although in some cases not... Well, the, offic that. the official narrative is that Project Mockingbird ended in the late 60s, early well, 70s. Just change it to another um, name. <laughs> yeah, more than likely. But yeah, they, they, they're basically the, the mainstream media who are in control of brainwashing and manipulating public perception right. into voting for the people that the powers that be actually want in power. Well, you've done a whole series with, yeah. isn't that part of your uh, circus of the mind? Or is, I think that's what that's large. That's, large part, of, that's part of my documentary, Extreme Danger, Extreme Hypnosis. Right. As I say, people go on my Celebrity Hypnotist YouTube channel, click on the playlist and click on Extreme Danger, Extreme Hypnosis. In the documentary and in the mini web series, we do take a look at the lamestream or mainstream legacy media, uh, and that includes the Murdoch media. He's got a lot of power worldwide, but we also look at other media such as uh, the Daily Mail, the Mirror Group newspapers, and other organizations. As I say, at the moment, um, Prince Harry is taking legal cases against a number of these but all different levels of dishonest and illegal um, activities. Over the next 6 to 18 months, by way of that which will hopefully come to public um, knowledge in open court through Prince Harry's multiple legal cases, and that that will hopefully also come to public light through the num numerous phone hacking cases that are going on and people that will be, hopefully, when they get some form of admission in an open court as part of their settlement for the illegal activities that were taking place against them, hopefully they'll then be able to use that in the manner that Dr. Evan Harris talks about in the video that people can see on hackinginquiry.org forward slash my mood to then be able to get the Criminal Cases Review Commission to refer their cases, including mine, John Alford's, and a whole bunch of other people, back to the courts of appeal to finally get the justice we deserve, because none of us should have ever gone to court in the first place. Um, has, because they knew back in 1994 he shouldn't be trusted. Yeah. Has, has anyone, because I'm looking at the Wikipedia article, right? Well, we had it. We had it on screen. There it is. Uh, that. You know, let's just see. On as of August thirty first, two thousand twelve, the Met had identified nearly five thousand victims. Not quite five thousand victims of phone hacking by News of the World, whose names and phone numbers had been found in evidence. Of the victims, six hundred fifty eight had been contacted, but three hundred and eighty eight were not contactable. And police chose not to contact another twenty three mm -hmm. for quote operational reasons. Hmm. Wonder what that would entail, these operational reasons. That's interesting. Of the victims, yeah. nearly 2,000 had been contacted, but 1,781 were not contactable. There's, there is a whole list then that 
we proceed to uh, have presented to us. Uh, I was looking for yours earlier, and I, I didn't find it. There's, there's nothing under Well, it won't be on the Wikipedia because it's an ongoing case, but if people, there's a website that people can go to, oh. caseboard.io, that's C-A-S-E-B-O-A-R-D, caseboard.io, and then you can search under cases. And if you search for Smith versus NGN, so that's Smith versus News Group Newspapers Limited, you'll see that my uh, case was filed in the High Court on September the 30th, 2022, case number BL 2022-001644. And you can also look at that on that same day and a few days prior to it and a couple of days after it, so roughly from the 25th of September through till about the um, 3rd of October, there were dozens and dozens and dozens running into the hundreds of other people that also submitted privacy intrusion cases against news group newspapers and other media organisations such as Murrah Group newspapers and other ones as well. And amongst them, as Dr Evan Harris makes mention of in the video that's on hackinginquiry.org forward slash Mahmood, that's forward slash M-A-H-M-O-O-D, um, there are a, a fair number of people who were, like myself, victims of Mazza Mahmood's entrapment unlawful information gathering, being drugged without us knowing, uh, and his dishonesty and outright lies, who have got claims submitted that are currently progressing through the legal system. Mm -hmm. And over the next, could take another 12, 18 months maybe, possibly even two years, who knows. But when we get to the conclusion of those cases, I would hope that not just me, but a whole bunch of other people who've got their claims in that are mood related will get some kind of admission in open court, we would hope. And compensation. Kind of... That's that's really what ultimately uh Well know... that's not what that's not why I've taken this case personally. I can't you... speak for anyone else. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I've been advised that I should seek compensation right. and damages. Yes. For having my life ruined, for ending up serving time in prison, Obviously, for, my, sure. for, for, for the negativity I've received and lies since based on their dishonesty and lies. However, what is far more important to me mm -hmm. is getting some form of admission yep. in an open court that they did carry out these illegal activities. Yeah, getting your because name cleared. Then, That's then, what you want. You yeah, want to have your name. because then I can take that then I can take that exactly to the Criminal Cases Review Commission, get referred back to the Court of Appeal, and ultimately get my convictions overturned and clear my name once and for all, which is what I know at heart all the Muslim and mood victims that I've spoken to, the ones that did get jail time, such as heavyweight boxer Herbie Hyde, actor John Alford, um, and, and a number of others, what we all want more than anything is that admission from them. And also, I, I guess we'd now like a proper investigation doing into the Police and Crown Prosecution Service is complete failings in their disclosure duties to us because this evidence exists that they knew in 1994. Any well, case after 1994 should never have gone to court, let alone anyone going to jail. Mm -hmm. yeah, complete failing... Or, on the other hand, more a case of intentional sandbagging. Uh, some people would claim that. Um, yeah, some may claim that, that they just turned a blind eye. But I have, I, God knows. Well. That needs investigating. There has been gross miscarriages of justice. Here. How corrupt, how corrupt is the CPS, as you refer to it? Uh, along with, of course, the con I, I guess constabulatory, as I, they're sometimes referred to in Canada, similar term which the, yourself as a Brit would be familiar with. Americans apparently, uh, it doesn't. That's not part of their 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 uh, language or lexicon. But yeah, uh, constabulatory meaning essentially the you know the law enforcement, yeah. police police force. 
So, uh, but I can tell you this much. Mm -hmm. If you look at Circus of the Mind.net, at the bottom of the page where I've got links to other pages with other evidence and stuff, my most recent replies from the Crown Prosecution Service Inspectorate, who were supposed to investigate and make sure that the CPS are doing things correctly and whatnot, I asked them to investigate the CPS and this lack of disclosure, and they've categorically stated that they do things on a year-by-year -year basis and that they've already got planned out what they will be looking at for the year of uh, 2023 to 2024. And um, that they have no intentions and will not be looking at disclosure issues during the course of the next 12 months. Definitely not. Well, there we go. One quick uh, just final question here before we let you go regarding Circus of the Mind. We did a quick uh, web search using determine and came up uh, when was it that you actually launched the website uh how far back does that oh, go heck. how did and how ah, did you well, come up that... the concept how did you come up with the concept well the domain name's one i already owned anyway because i my hypnosis shows i have circus of the mind dot co dot uk yep where it advertises my hypnosis shows and i bought various different versions of the domain name so back in, I mean, currently the page that that domain name, circusofthemind.net, points to is dated as June the 14th, 2022. Okay. But originally, originally it pointed to a page that went back to, um, you know, the, the early noughties. It's been pointed to different pages over the years. So okay, so, the mm -hmm. yeah, but you came up yeah. with the concept and you've been working on the Circus of the Mind project since when? Years. Oh, blimey. Um, 2000? Frankie. Yeah, easily. Okay. In that, in that region. Early, uh, early, early 2000, so a few years after um, me getting screwed over by <sighs> the moon and screwed over by the lackings of uh, disclosure from the CPS, I made it my mission to keep researching, and I've done over the years, and then publish more and more information. Um because on circusofthemind.net, there's a link that says, click here for my past 25 years of research. And that has got evidence galore that when you look at it, you'll just your mind will explode and you'll go, how was this ever allowed to happen? How could it happen? How could this level of corruption, dishonesty, and oftentimes incompetence um, have been allowed to occur? And once people became aware of it, why? Well, the answer to why is obviously people have got too much to lose by the truth coming out. Right. But why part, part two of the Leveson inquiry in England was supposed to investigate corruption between the police, the CPS, and the media and other high-ranking officials? Oh, I thought, you're, these, I, I thought you were going to say Freemasons. So I well, <laughs> could add them to the it, list, too, I guess. could have even gone into that, but the fact is, it got swept under the carpet, and part two of the Levitt inquiry got cancelled. And oh, the hackinginquiry.org are still running campaigns to try and get part two of the Levison inquiry reinstated, because part of that, whilst examining police corruption, DPS incompetence and or corruption, would end up focusing on the activities of Mazza Mahmood and the gross miscarriages of justice that myself, John Alford, Herbie Hyde and a whole bunch of other people um, became victims of. All right, we got uh, Marion Pound, Nathan Smith, Just Mac, and uh, Karen Cox as well, too, uh, who have dropped by here, making themselves known, in addition to Fred, uh, Jim Grass, Joshua Allen Huckle, and Fox Azur. Uh, a few comments talking about, well, how we're... It's a good show to this point, I guess. Some people appreciating things. Uh, let's see. Nathan Smith talking about looking into some of the people that you've been talking about recently. Some some big stuff going on is what Nathan is, is saying here with respect to your um, everything that that you're you're sharing with us here once again. Uh, this evening, Jonathan. So, oh yeah, this is this is massively multi-layered. Anyone who takes even five or ten minutes to look at Circus of the Mind dot net, hackinginquiry dot org forward slash Mahmood, or does a general Google search on Mazma Mahmood and 
with keywords like corruption or um, guilty or phone hacking or drugged or various other words that I've mentioned will very rapidly see that I've only scraped the surface here. This is multi-layered. Mazza Mahmood, one of his bosses and people he had contact with in the past, was somebody called Rebecca Brooks, yep. formerly Rebecca Wade, who was cleared. She was cleared oh, no. by a court of any involvement in phone hacking, okay? That was the so red, the redhead. That clear. The kind yeah, of the that's milf. correct. Yeah. Redhead. <laughs> I've got to make it clear the court's cleared her of any um, wrongdoing in a phone hacking trial. However, there are suggestions from many quarters that if certain cases, including Prince Harry's, make it to court that, and things go through the full court process, that new evidence is likely to come to light that would suggest that certain people um, may end up then having to be looked at again more closely because yeah. it may illustrate yeah. that, you know. Sure. Including including Rebecca and God only knows who else. Rebecca Piers herself. Morgan. Oh, are the things I've heard a few things about Piers. You probably know a little more about Piers. Well, than... I know that in May, they've just given a date for a trial in May. Uh, one of Prince Harry's cases against Murrah Group newspapers will start in the courts in England in May. And is scheduled, I think, for about 12 weeks. Uh, and Prince Harry is the only witness uh, for his case. He's just standing himself. He, um, and I do believe, whilst he may not appear as a witness in court, that one of the people uh, whose honesty or lack thereof, as the case may be, um, but that's going to be called into question, is um, Piers Morgan, as I understand it. Well... How how about that? So um, interesting, uh, and I'm not surprised in the least. Just a few. I've heard some pretty interesting things regarding how he he operates, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, just Max saying that they're lurking around a bit and has us over their speaker while working on some stuff. So a little multitasking taking place there via. Uh, Europe and the uh, German Netherlands border essentially is where uh, one of our D Live supporters, Just Mech, um, is based out of. That's where he calls home. So, and this is one of the reasons, Jonathan, why we've been working on promoting this particular time slot once every two weeks is so that we have a chance to connect with uh people such as yourself via the uk and europe uh who we'd otherwise miss out on because of um how we operate things time wise with respect to our midweek muck around the news show that we do and then the friday yeah. feature guest it's it leaves you guys are like dead asleep it's like three four in the morning yeah typically. in terms of it live don't don't get us wrong people can always catch up on the recordings um, That's right. Oh yeah. On YouTube oh yeah. Oh, no. and other, other, yeah. Other platforms. And don't be under any illusions. What we've been speaking about today, although I keep saying this is UK-based media. Remember, Rupert Murdoch owns media organisations in Australia, America, and in many other places around the world. He owns newspapers, magazines, TV stations, radio stations, book publishing companies. There's a handful of people, like five or six people, um, who are at the top of the tree who own all of the world's media well okay. and that's perhaps what makes uh live streaming shows such as ourselves even though we don't necessarily pick up um the amount of viewership and support that that they do that one upon the next if you look at things uh comparatively there's a lot of live streaming underground um operations essentially that are currently underway and is said to be that's one of the things that the rockefellers among others new world order if you want to put it that way are uh you know they're really wanting to to neutralize uh, because of mm. the the opposition or the you know the critical analysis that we offer uh which portrays them that the, that put forward these endless uh, official narratives that turn out to be 
uh, so often scenarios where we find ourselves, if we reflect upon what the hell's going on, we're being gaslit endlessly. Oh, yeah. Uh, virtually. If anyone's under any illusion whatsoever uh, uh, that what you've just mentioned is some sort of conspiracy theory, I just draw their attention to this. Since Elon Musk has taken over Twitter, prior to him taking it over, there were people that were labeled as conspiracy nut jobs saying that Twitter was shadow banning people or banning them or not banning them, but making it so that their pulse would not be seen by as many people, so that they were, you know, running the narrative in favor of certain political um, directions yep. and stuff. In other words, manipulating and influencing the public. And a lot of people were labeled as conspiracy nut jobs for suggesting that. Since Elon Musk has taken over Twitter, he has started publishing what he calls the Twitter files. Correct. If you go on his own Twitter, Elon Musk's own official Twitter, and search for the Twitter files, he started releasing the proof that these things were most definitely going on. Yeah. And it wasn't a conspiracy nut job thing. What people were saying was taking place, people getting shadow banned and silenced, was definitely taking place. Sure. Yeah, and it all goes back, well, in large part at least, to the algorithms. That's why some people manage to pick up a lot more exposure and coverage, reaching a far wider audience uh, than others. And we've we've ourselves yeah. been the, you know, have, have had to suffer, uh, you know, shadow banning is some, not something that uh, we are strangers too, unfortunately. <laughs> we it's all too often. There's a we lot find... of people. A lot of people think it doesn't exist, but it does. Yeah. Rather than shut down your account, yeah. you do that sometimes in extreme cases. But what they'll do is, it's like my YouTube account. It's only got a couple of thousand um, subscribers, mm -hmm. and most of my videos don't get that many views. And yet, they don't on there. But the same video, but on Vimeo and I do have a Vimeo channel, will get massive amounts of views. So I don't appear to be shadow banned on Vimeo, probably right. because I'm paying for a professional package. But on YouTube, certainly my, any of the videos that are talking about how the media's uh, got elements of it that are dishonest and illegal actions, or any of the videos we're talking about, the brainwashing manipulation uh, and... Um, psychological operations used to manipulate the public to the point of even videos where I'm talking about something like the 77th Battalion, which if you search for it, it's a division of the British Army. They don't even try and hide the fact. They've got a website clearly saying the 77th Battalion is um, the section that deals with psychological warfare. Working in conjunction chaos. with the Tavistock Institute, perchance. Correct. Yeah. Working in conjunction with the Tavistock Institute of Human that. Relations which was linked in with MK Ultra years ago, but now is linked in with uh, the Behavioral Hin Insights team uh, that's referred to in the media as the Nudge Unit that operates out of Westminster. They're all interlinked with each other. It's all part of the uh, manipulating and controlling the mass populace. We, and we've, exactly. And, and, you know, we've got to learn not to be, um, when it comes to the you know, so-called uh, business of conspiracy theories, things do get, well, you know the difference between a conspiracy theory and a conspiracy fact, don't you, Jonathan? Well, six months, 12 months, 18 months. Something like that, uh, yeah, or even less, uh, exactly. So conspiracy facts are something that we need to be more focused on. And that's the way science is conducted, obviously, when these things come to light. <clears throat> Similarly, with respect, I would argue to uh, historical revisionism, from a scientific perspective, that's what you've got to do. You've got to keep going back to what has taken place, what has transpired. Look at it, assess it, you know, weighing its its merits or 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 otherwise, and getting a, just a better uh, feel for things, a clearer clearer sense of of the reality. So. Uh, just finally, before we let you go, a, a little known uh, fact, actually, you shared with mm -hmm. us, I, you know, last year, I guess, it might have actually been March of 2020 when we had uh, the one feature show that we put together, although as memory serves, I, I could almost swear that we've done 
uh, another. But uh, that aside, Gareth Ike, I, is he still someone that you regard as a friend or, you know, you're still on good terms with, with David's son? Uh, I don't know if you grew up together Gareth, necessarily Gareth, or... No, no um, Gareth uh, Ike and Jamie Ike, David Ike's sons, I, my, 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 I wouldn't say we were friends in the sense of on the phone to each other. Definitely not. Right. But neither are we. Uh, but we're not enemies. We're, 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 we're friendly. Okay. Okay. Uh, and sure. the, re the reason I know Gareth is, uh, well, I met both. I've met both of uh, David's son when I was at an event that David uh, ran and afterwards was in the bar with um, David and Jamie and Gareth. But Gareth very kindly contributed, as people can see, if they go on my Celebrity Hypnotist YouTube channel, click on the playlist and click on Extreme Danger, Extreme Hypnosis, Gareth very kindly contributed to my documentary, Extreme Danger, Extreme Hypnosis, It's Time for Sleepwalking Zombies to Wake Up. And he spoke about how the likes of the late Max Clifford, the publicist for the stars, would fabricate and engineer stories and how he... Uh, what his experiences with Max Clifford were mm -hmm. and how basically they turned around and told him to cut any ties with his dad so that he could pursue his music career. And That's obviously right. Gareth, yeah. Gareth said, no, I'm not doing that. You know, my dad's my dad. I'm not cutting ties with him just to pursue a music career. But that's how they wanted to manipulate the agenda. Um, and then obviously Jamie and Gareth uh, have set up a, an alternative media station called television station called Iconic. And from day one of them uh, broadcasting, they have had in their archives online for members of Iconic, my documentary, um, because it was made by the director, Richard Willett, and Richard Willett of Brick in the Wall Films is now working almost, not exclusively, but almost exclusively, presenting a couple of shows and also helping make shows for uh, the iconic alternative news station that you can find at I-C-K-O-N-I-C, iconic, um, iconic.com, I think, mm -hmm. the top of my head, I'll just check. Yep, it's iconic.com. Um, my documentary's on there, but you can see it on YouTube anyway for free. Um, but other stuff that Richard Willett, who was the director of that, uh, is is on Iconic, and that's my that's how I met Gareth. So that's, mm. that's my link just to put it in perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I, yeah. As far as as far as what them their message of trying to get people to question things, I agree with that. I don't necessarily agree with everything they put out because uh, you know some of it. The evidence just shows is, frankly, in my opinion, and based on the evidence I've seen. Um, does go into the realms of nonsense. However, a lot of it, when you do your own independent research, does have validity. Um, you know, it just don't. It, unfortunately, some of some of it they've got caught up in. You know, they're categorically one of the things David Icke has said is that basically COVID nineteen never existed and it was um, nonsense. And I, I'm sorry. But the simple weight of evidence, you know, these people that come out and say it's never been, um, it's never been proven in a isolated. Lab. They've never isolated the isolated. virus. Isolated, yeah. They say it's never been isolated. That's nonsense. Go on my friend's website, Neil Sanders Mind Control. Oh yeah. Dot com. Sure, That's Neil N E I L. Mm -hmm. Neil Sanders Mind Control. Mm -hmm. um, dot co. Dot uk. Sure. Go on there. And search through his archives on his blog, and he's he's published the evidence. They have isolated COVID nineteen. It does exist. It is a real virus. Simple as that. Okay. When nonsense that David Icke or anyone else is still parroting on to the contrary of that is precisely that. Nonsense. You're saying they're saying that they're just wrong, obviously. So. Uh, qu qu question here for you: <laughs> Where, where then did uh, you know uh, the flu disappear to uh, right around the world? Did you notice that? I certainly did. It disappeared, disappeared right, here well, in Korea, again, disappeared in Canada. That, that's, that, USA, that's not that's not true, is it? I mean, that, that's um, a very easy narrative for 
some of the truth community to uh, come out with. But the fact is, if you go to neilsandersmindcontrol.co.uk, where it says Neil's blog, let it drop, drop down. Now, the stuff on Cambridge Analytica, yeah. the fact that Cambridge Analytica um, is a military-grade government PSYOP weapon mm -hmm. um, is worth looking at anyway. But below that, there's a link to his COVID-19 investigations and the evidence. And look at it, then independently research what Neil has put there, try and prove him wrong, and you will find, much to the upset of many in the truth community, sadly, who've fallen for the narrative that COVID-19 wasn't real and it's not been isolated. Well, I'm sorry, it has been isolated. It is a real virus, and it did kill tons of people. If anything, any lying about figures has gone on the other way. They've fudged the figures to make it seem not as bad as it was. Mm. The evidence of what was really going on, go and check out Neil Sanders' mindcontrol.co.uk. Look at his blog on COVID-19. It will upset a lot in the truth community, I know, because it will make you have to turn around, look at it, examine it yourself, and end up saying, uh-oh, David Icke got this wrong. COVID does exist as a real virus. It has been isolated in a lab. Okay, there's still questions out there on a daily basis as to um, was it genetically engineered in a lab? Was it a lab leak or was it nature and all that stuff? Even the past 72 hours, if you just search Google News, there's some elements of American investigators saying there's more evidence now that it was a lab leak in Wuhan. But then there's just as many people saying, no, that's nonsense. It came from the wet market. Um, so, you know, there's still unanswered questions, but in terms of the main core things, one of the best sources you'll find is Neil Saunders mindcontrol.co.uk. Click where it says blog, look at his COVID-19 investigations, and then go and try and prove him wrong. If, you've, if you're currently of a mindset that the likes of David Icke are correct in saying COVID-19 wasn't a real virus, then you really need to try and prove Neil Sanders is evidence wrong. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, spoiler alert, I'll tell you now, if you go and look at Neil's evidence and try and prove it wrong, you won't be able to do. And thus, the only conclusion you'll be able to come to is the one that is reality backed by more evidence, that it's a genuine virus that's killed a shockingly large amount of people. All right. Uh, uh, did you uh, your, uh, yourself... That's not to, that's not to say yeah. that powers that be haven't jumped on the back of it to use it to their own advantage to manipulate well, uh, long-term planned world events. Of course. That's an entirely different thing right. altogether. Uh, yes, yes. The fact that powers that be have harnessed things that have happened unexpectedly is something that, that powers that be always do. They will try and take advantage of any situation. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they're doing that doesn't mean that the thing that they're taking advantage of isn't real. Yeah, not necessarily. That's correct. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mm. mean that's just you know, logical uh, breakdown there, obviously. And uh, d did you actually? So I, I'm I'm not sure. Then I'm I'm guessing you may have taken these experimental. Now that's a separate issue too. The experimental kill shots, of course, and then a herd immunity. So have we reached reached herd immunity uh, as far as you're concerned? And you know, I'm not sure if you if you even care to disclose. I'm not, or not. I'm not the per I'm not the person to ask about that. I'm not a scientist. I do oh, not right. have medical expertise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, neither does Neil Sanders, but he relates to people that do. Yeah, and quotes sure. those people. But one thing, the only thing I will say on herd immunity is that it is unquestionable that British Prime Minister Boris Johnson wanted to try and go down the herd immunity route. That that leaked out the evidence, but that doesn't. Little things like that just cloud the bigger picture. For the bigger picture, you've got to see it in the entirety, and that's why I say go and look at Neil mm -hmm. Saunders' blog right. and the evidence that's laid out there and the links that he then gives to people who actually know what we're talking about. Okay. No, no. I'm no, not a scientist, and I'm not a medically yeah. qualified person. Simple very, as that. Very good point. Uh, no arguing, however, I would imagine that uh, the virus as it was has definitely 
lost a lot of its uh, potency. Would you not agree to that? It's it's very much um, well. That's generally what's been talked about in the public domain anyway, yeah. and that's generally what we see if we look back on history and other right other yeah. things. That's right. That's how these things uh, viruses tend to. Uh, play out over time that or yeah they, they go. so in the absence of evidence of something else occurring that is what you would naturally expect to see happen anyway yeah mm. uh well i think that about does it jonathan i'd like to get you back thank at you. some point yes and thank you so much it's a question of the time scheduling though because of uh you know, where we find ourselves yeah, opposite sides of the world obviously I don't know how willing you'd be in getting yourself up and uh, ready to go for a, a, a few year. months. A few months down the line, when I've actually got more to report and there's been more movement in my uh, legal cases, then yeah, getting up in the middle of the night may become a, 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 an option. But at the minute, I don't have anything more. Yes, yes. The, but but to we share we, as it were. Yeah, but the thing about it is like what I'm thinking really I'd like to focus on once again is a revisitation, circus of the mind, psychological manipulation, and and uh, how how this uh, you know how the tricks of the mind as well too I believe as Darren Brown uh, has yeah. as as famous uh, the series and special that he put together. How you know? It's just how how we're played. We're basically we're you're played for total uh, suckers. And 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 the word government itself. Were you aware? You're probably aware. It does literally oh, break men, down as meant is mine, yeah. and govern is to control. It Correct. means mind control. Yes. Yeah. And I always the argument I make, or at least the point that's raised, is who's who's really in charge of your mind, you or somebody else. So we uh, typically as, as pirates, you can imagine that we uh, we like to uh, promote. Uh, the more autonomous, self-naming uh, approach to things, rather than just slavishly handing over your uh, that end of of you know our lives, everything just wholesale to some other third party entity, trusting that they're they can do a better job of managing our uh, our psychic uh, space and and just lives in general better than we ourselves can. So. Already, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and any upcoming uh, public shows appearances? Do you manage to work any comedy into your your shows? Regard, especially with respect to the uh, the legal, um, you know, the stress that you've had placed upon you over the years. The, co- the I, 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 I mean, I do. There is comedy in my shows, um, but I mean, people. There's videos on uh, the Celebrity Hypnotist YouTube channel. Right. A lot of uh, comedy works in, but not in relation, not yet in relation to uh, ongoing legal cases. There will be when uh, everything's concluded. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Whilst things are currently in action, one has to be very aware and careful of um, the what you say. Pat, because yeah. of um, you know potentially becoming in contempt of court. Yeah, we, you know? well, indeed, yes. Yeah, so uh, the thing is, everything I spoke about today is out there in the public domain. That's why I've mentioned various websites where people can mm-hmm. see stuff. It's already out there. Right. I'm not letting I'm not letting any cat out of the bag or anything I shouldn't be saying. I'm just telling you about things that are so shotgun all over the place that no one person is likely to randomly just find all those different sites. But having heard this, knowing they exist, you can go and look at those several different sites, piece it together for yourself, and then see the bigger picture and jigsaw and realize the true gravity. This this has impact and connotations on a truly worldwide basis. Absolutely. And this is one of the things, of course, that we do encourage our listeners to do. Drop by your websites. Uh, you know, Circus of the Mind is, is the primary one that you've been discussing. Yep, circusofthemind.net. That's definitely the central one, yeah. Magicalguru.com, then, is the more secondary URL. Is that what you're saying? That's more That's more where people can find me to book me for a comedy hypnosis show or for a hypnotherapy session or for one of my mind magic shows or things like that. Whereas the serious research and the exposing the truth 
uh, the corruption, the lies, the illegal activities and whatnot, the way people are brainwashed, manipulated and controlled uh, is all findable through the various links they can find on Circus of the Mind. Yeah. All right. The media, the lies, the setups is how uh, Nathan Smith puts it here. Uh, uh, and followed up by Joshua Allen Huckle, uh, talking about how he too is loving the show. So I, th I think that's where we're going to have to end things though, for this edition. Thank you Jonathan. very much. Yes, indeed. So uh, all the best and we will be in contact again here shortly. Happy sailing. Happy sailing. Ahoy shit, mate. Take care. Songbul Haseo, as the Koreans say here. So, yes, good night and, uh, well, good afternoon, I suppose, given the fact he himself is based out of London, UK, where currently they find themselves in the mid afternoon hours, versus where we are having, as I suspected we might, um, uh, you know, carry on over a little longer than what we initially intended with the with the one hour allotment that we had set aside. But uh, with with that being the case, we are nonetheless prepared here to, you know, queue up some quality, at least what we believe to be quality audiovisual content and material. Uh, courtesy of the interwebs and uh, would invite everyone out there to uh, to chime in and uh, contribute your thoughts and comments as to what you know ultimately we're to make of all this jive uh, it's as always been a pretty busy news week and we will be back with more, of course, speaking of news, this coming Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 out on the East Coast. Uh, that's Wednesday, 12 p.m. noon here via South Korea. Initially, we were not 100% sure whether we'd be putting together a midweek muck around uh, World Pirate Radio News edition this week because of the wife's work schedule and her wanting to perhaps uh, have me fill in for her. But she's flip-flopped on that now, as she so 